Welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living, a podcast that aims to encourage, challenge, and equip Christians in their daily walk with Christ. Join us as we discuss scripture, theology, the issues of the day, and uplifting stories from folks just like you. Here's your host, Danny Forshee. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to Revangelical Rethinking Christian Living. This is episode 230. Thank you, Lord, uh, for being with us and giving us your grace. Uh, My name is Danny Forshee. I'm the president of the Danny Forshee Evangelistic Association, also very blessed to serve as the pastor at Great Hills Baptist Church in Austin, Texas, and I'm delighted uh, to have you join in with us uh, in our podcast today. Our mission, uh, and Ashley and I both are very passionate about our mission at DFEA, and that is to share messages of hope Mm -hmm. and encouragement uh, from uh, the Word of God. I always enjoy having uh, Ashley, my wife, in the studio uh, with me. So, Ashley, again, um, I'm going to put you on the spot. All right. You know the answer to this question, (laughs) but here's the question I have for Ashley. Ashley has this motto for life. Yeah. Oh, good. And our kids know it, and I know it. We're going to teach it to our grandkids. And Ashley, share our motto for life for our family. <laughs> okay, do the best that you can. That's it. Huh? That's it. Do mm. the best that you can. And mm. So maybe somebody needed to hear that. Maybe mm. you're just struggling, and you just maybe don't think your best is good enough, but it is. Mm. And God bless you. We've enjoyed so much uh, having Bob and Gail Gaines with us in the last episode. And so we had so much fun. We thought we would uh, continue the conversation and yes. allow you to listen in to their story. It's a pretty remarkable story. Mm-hmm. Um, they are, uh, they've been married for 50 years. Yes. Uh, they're serving the Lord strong. Of course, they're the parents of, of Chip Gaines from the Chip and Joanna uh, show, Magnolia, all that. But they also have a daughter named Shannon and yeah. her husband and their family. They love family deep, mm, you yes, can tell. They and they yeah. take... Uh, energy from their family, yeah. and I, I love this phrase. I don't, I can't remember if they said it last time, or I know they'll say it this time. Is get in the dirt. Yeah, you'll enjoy this. Yeah. So God bless you as you tune in as we continue our conversation with Bob and Gail Gaines. Parenting. Uh, any final words, Gail, that you'd like to share with us? Oh uh, well, another thing that I believe in strongly okay. is kids turn off the TV, yeah. turn off your cell phones. Yeah. Go outside and play. Absolutely. I think there's nothing more healthy for little boys and little girls is to yeah. get dirt all <laughs> over their clothes. Dirt yeah. is healthy. Amen. <laughs> Preach, sister. <laughs> That's a good quote. That dirt is. is healthy. Uh, That's right. Because, I mean, we get, you know, we were out to dinner the other night with our, our youngest son, Leighton. His wife uh, is a nurse. She was working a late shift. Layton's on our staff here at Great Hills. He helps us with our social media ministry. And so we were eating dinner, and uh, there was a family of like five or six, and the girl was probably five or six years old, or mm. maybe seven. Oh, yeah. And she was totally immersed in her iPad. She never looked up to the family mm. for like 45 minutes. And my son, Layton's yeah. like, Mom and Dad, that is not going to happen when I have kids. Uh, <laughs> and I right. thought, well, good, good for right. him. Would have done. Yes. I've heard some families say, okay, put them all on the middle of the table. We're not looking at them exactly. at, at dinner, you know. And then I like what Gail said. Let's go outside and get in the dirt. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Sounds, sounds fun. You know, Bob, before I leave that, I, I thought of something when you were sharing about the, you know, and I'm a big proponent of sports as well because sports teaches life lessons. You, you listed three or four what I would call transferable principles that Chip learned in baseball but then he took that right into the business world, repetition, discipline, not quitting, dream big, and all those those things. So really, really neat. Okay, so, um, I, and I was sharing with the with Bob and Gail, we were talking earlier. I, I did not know for sure. I had heard that Joanna was a member at Great Hills Baptist Church in Austin, Texas. And she was, and her and her parents, and I've heard they were very faithful when they lived here in this area and attended our church. And I thought that was, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so uh, most in the USA and now probably a lot of people in the world have seen Chip and Joanna. They've read their books. They've seen them on TV. And uh, if they're like Ashley and me, they've been to Magnolia. Amen. <laughs> going, going to Waco, you know. <laughs> going there and hung out and spent a few dollars. That's such a cool cool place. Mm-hmm. The silos and all that good stuff. Um, so has the... From your perspective as parents to to Chip and, and, and of course, in-law to Joanna, 
just you mentioned Gail earlier about their career right a few years ago when it was just taken off and you turned to Bob and said this is pretty amazing and we we get to be a part of this you know as a as a family you know how how have they been able to to manage just a very successful career but I know they love the Lord and I know family's more important to them than the success of their business so mm-hmm. how have they been able to navigate that well, let, let me take you back in time a little bit before yeah. we go into the success part of it. Yeah. Because before there was success, there was very much pain and very mm. much uh, tribulation going on in their life. And uh, if you've ever, if you read Chip's book, it's, it tells that story mm. in there about uh, how, how the struggle was. And that yeah. struggle was a part of our lives as well and the Stevens' lives. Because yeah. uh, Chip uh, was in financial trouble, mm-hmm. uh, it was right in the middle of the big downturn in real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had just uh, purchased a big piece of land and started building houses on it, and yeah. all of a sudden the money dried up from the banks, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just gone. Yeah, and uh, we had uh, huge uh, machinery sitting out there on our lots with uh, partial streets and partial gutters uh, and, and pavement put in wow. and, and, uh, and, and then couldn't fund the rest of it. Mm. And, and so we were all struggling with it. And, and we, we had many, many conversations where, where we had uh, uh, tearful uh, mm. uh, conversations. And, sure. and uh, our Sunday school teacher, Winston Eckhart, mm-hmm. uh, a lesson one Sunday in Judges uh, 26, uh, 20, uh, Judges 2026 20, mm-hmm. about fasting. Mm-hmm. And it talked about uh, the Israelites going out and in, going into battle and, and how uh, dis- discouraged the, the Israelites were uh, right. before going into that battle. Yeah. And so they said they, they, they fasted for the uh, all day mm-hmm. until the evening. Yeah. And so uh, uh, we heard that lesson and we went home and we called Chip and Joanne on the phone. We mm-hmm. said, let's fast for the rest mm-hmm. of this day oh, and into the evening. Great. See if we can get a, a word from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And uh, sure enough, uh, after after going through that, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Gail got a, a message herself mm-hmm. directly from God in a scripture mm-hmm. that she uh, has written down, and I'll let her uh, talk to you about that. Oh, please do. That's fascinating. Well, the scripture was Deuteronomy 8.10, and this is what it says. I'm telling you, we had fasted uh, on Sunday afternoon as well as through Monday, and I know some people fast a lot longer than that, but mm-hmm. our people can only go 24 hours. <laughs> Our people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear. Hey. So, yeah. I opened my Bible, mm. and this is what I come across. When you have eaten and are full, you will bless the Lord for the good land that he has given you. Amen. We called Chip and Joanna, and we said, what, what does that mean? And even though... I don't think we knew at that time, within a few days, and I'm talking maybe another day or two, a couple mm-hmm. from their church called. Mm-hmm. And get ready for this. The guy said, we'd like to meet y'all up at the subdivision. So Chip and Joanna, here they go. That couple gave them $100,000. What? And you know what they said? Wow. The man said, if you can't pay it back, it's okay. Wow. Now, I've never had anybody say that to me in my life. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of money, yeah. And you know what they did? They went home and they started writing checks to pay people back that they owed. Wow. And if that hadn't happened, hmm. there wouldn't have been a fixer upper story. Let's put right. it that way. For sure. Yeah. Was so this anyway, some- pretty cool. That's an amazing story, and I love that. Uh, make sure I get the text. Is it Deuteronomy 8.10 or 10.8? It was 8.10. Okay, I have to remember Deuteronomy that. Deuteronomy 8.10. That's mm-hmm. wonderful how God speaks through His Word. Yeah. He speaks through prayer and fasting. He speaks through one another, gave you that word. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm guessing, Bob, that was 
the downturn was that 07, 08? Was that am I about the yeah. right time frame? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's when we were. Yes, exactly right. We were moving to Austin about that time. In 2010. 2010, and we had a house. We could not sell that house. I mean, it was just a tough, tough time. 18 months we yeah. were in that. Yeah. And we sold a house wow. here in Austin, in Austin just recently. It took us a whopping a week. Two weeks or, or whatever. Two, yeah. or two weeks, you know. It, it's amazing yeah. how that is. But thank yeah. you for, I, yeah. I love that, Bob. You said, you know, really to understand and appreciate where they are now and where they're going, you got to really get a backstory of where they've been. You know, and, and that's that gives us um gives us some some perspective on, on that. And it is fun to to see and to watch um, people that love Jesus and to do Amen. do great in business and to have the influence, the platform, you know, that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. So yeah, I was, I, in my notes here, I remember uh, the Baylor football game we saw y'all a couple oh, years ago, right. and it was so so fun. It was a cold night. Got to say hey to to Bob and Gail and. Well, no football last year. I didn't see anybody no <laughs> football games in 2020. That killed me, you know, and not being able to go to games and all. And so we're talking COVID and, and um, you know, it's it, it was a challenge for so many people. A lot of people lost their lives, about a half a million people mm. in this world. And or is that just in America? Yeah, about a half a million in, um, in America. Yeah, yeah. And then worldwide, it's been, you know, millions of people. But you know, Gail, talking to you, I I, I love some of what you were sharing because uh, during the, the COVID time is so challenging and difficult for so many people. But you had an interesting perspective on that when you uh, shared with me a little bit in an email about how you guys approached it and, and kind of what happened with you and your family during the COVID year. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? I'm going to let Bob tell that. Okay, Bob, tell well, us. Uh, yeah, so we uh, we ended up uh, looking, and we'd been looking for quite some time, so it, it wasn't like uh, this just happened, uh, but we were looking for a place uh, in Austin, actually, uh, because mm-hmm. that's where Jackson uh, was oh. going to school at the time, cool. and uh, mm-hmm. Taylor, Shannon's older uh, uh, daughter, was a goalie for the University of Texas, and oh, so uh, wow. she was there, her, her family are, are still living there in Austin, so mm-hmm. we wanted to get up there to be able to, to kind of be with them, so we were trying to find a place there, mm-hmm. uh, somewhere where we could all kind of gather and, and get together, so sure enough, we found this place on on Lake Travis, uh, sure. that uh, uh, was a lake house, and uh, mm-hmm. it needed some work and renovation, so we uh, all kind of jumped in there and pitched in, and, and uh mm-hmm. Uh, started uh, making some improvements there on this thing mm-hmm. and made us a place where we could kind of kind of gather. Mm-hmm. Well, about in the uh, end of the time when we got that thing remodeled and it was just about ready to start using, COVID hit. Mm-hmm. And that made a great place for us to go retreat together mm-hmm. as a family. Yeah, And so we could, we could leave all the hustle and bustle in Dallas-Fort Worth and them in yeah. In uh, Colleyville and and uh, Taylor and them and Jackson in in Austin and so mm-hmm. we just would go there for the uh, in the weekends and and mm. just spend uh, three or four or five days together mm. and yeah. and not have to worry about uh, about being out and and uh, uh, but it was a time of renewal for us and mm. a, a time to get back to the family and and yeah. again. Uh, like, like Gail said earlier, turn the TV off and go do some activities outside sure. that. Go mm-hmm. uh, uh, jet skiing and go play in sure. the water and, and sure. just uh, be uh, in a place where you could feel comfortable and, mm-hmm. and not feel like you were being infected uh, uh, by the COVID somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it, and it kept us from from uh, uh, basically uh, having to to quarantine ourselves inside our houses like so many people had to do sure sure uh, so when we were quarantining we were quarantining basically as a family yeah, and so that was very meaningful to us and and very uh, a, a great time for us and uh you know there we've got great memories where uh i, I you know when, when i was younger uh, i could uh off of the dock i could uh, uh have the boat out there i'd wrap the rope rope up around uh, close to my feet and and when the boat got out there i'd jump in the water and i'd ski right off the dock wow and i said you know i I remember how i used to be able to do that i'm going to do that now 
And so I get up oh, on the no. dock and I ride oh, up boy. there and I got to hit it. And I mean, I face planted right into the water. <laughs> and all of my grandchildren and uh, everybody laughing. And, and it wasn't all that funny to me. But, yeah, uh, yeah. but again, those kinds of memories and those kinds of things are what sure. we kind of took away from, from that whole time yeah. when yeah. when people were, I know they were hurting and I know oh, they were sure. losing loved ones and those kinds of things. And, and, uh, but we took this time and, and, and we, we, uh, we had our 50th wedding anniversary, oh. uh, Gail, uh, experienced her 70th birthday, oh. uh, all of those kinds of things happened in those, uh, that year of COVID. And so, uh, not only do, do you remember the bad times, but there were good times as well. Yeah, so that's really sweet. And mm. just the fun that can be had as a family getting yeah. together and enjoying uh, one another. We, we feel the same way. We, yeah. we just absolutely thrive off of our family time mm. because we go hard. Everybody works hard and to be able to unwind and we go out to Lake LBJ a lot. We have some dear friends that have us out at their lake yeah. house and we jet ski and just eat and laugh. No fasting, Gail. There, we, we're not doing any fasting <laughs> in, the, in the lake. But um, yeah, Bob, I almost laughed when you said, "You know, this place needed a little, a little help." And I was thinking, "Man, you know, just the people that <laughs> you yeah. and you know, can fix this thing up." So, um, man, y'all have been so fun, I, and I've been so kind with your time. I, I do have a question, though. I'd love to to ask you. I know uh, as different people tune in to listen to the to the podcast today, they uh, a lot of people will be, "Well, wow, I'd love to to meet." Chip's parents. I mean, you know, I, I see him and know him. I'd love to see where he he comes from. And so, Bob and Gail, y'all have been fantastic. Yeah. Can't believe Gail's seventy. That ain't right. No, I mean, no. she don't look no seventy. I'm <laughs> telling you, y'all look great. Like I told you earlier, y'all both look great. So, I guess my question is, um, maybe somebody just tunes us in today and they're like, well, "I'm I'm really struggling. I'm struggling mm-hmm. with life. I'm struggling with marriage." And um, boy, I just just need maybe a Bible verse or need a word of encouragement. Uh, I assure you, I promise you, there will be some, if not many, in that category mm-hmm. as they're just trying to make it through life. And 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 Bob and Gail Gaines, what what would you say to that person if they would just tuned in today and just said, "Man, life is life is just really stressful for me right now." What could y'all tell me to help me? Mm-hmm. I would say for me, Psalm eighteen, verse one and two. Mm. And it's, I say it all the time. Lord, you are my rock. You are my protection. You are my savior. Mm. Just repeat that. Mm. And I don't care what it is. I don't care if uh, we're listening to news that is very troubling. Now, I I think it's hard to listen to the news. but. Bob and I say this probably to each other once a week. God is not ever taken by surprise. He's oh, never surprised. Good. That's a good word. It happens. Yeah. And uh, he's not surprised at where our country is right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will get through this. Amen. Amen. And I know our country is going through <laughs> some some very difficult times and, and we're divided as a country. And yeah. And uh, we as, as Christians and, and uh, uh, just, you know, just people on the same planet, right, that we need to figure out a way of, of how do we get back to where we can actually talk to one another civilly and, and, and talk to things and, and talk them out and, and get sure. down to basics, right? Because yeah. uh, we, we've gotten so far away from, from so many of the things that, that you and I were brought up. Uh, for, with, sure. for sure. And, mm-hmm. and you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when you take that hope with you and, and you, you take that as, as your guiding inside uh, your, your soul and your, and your own being, uh, you, you can figure out things and you can work together to get mm-hmm. answers and, and get things that uh, make sense. Yeah. So that's what I would say to to people today that there's hope out there, Amen. Uh, and and you know, not be uh, discouraged, not be in despair, yeah. but uh, but go out and and uh, get in the dirt and uh, yeah. you know just so 
Uh, it's good for uh, you. <laughs> you know, uh, get with your families and and uh, just love on one another, and and yeah. uh, things will will get better. Amen. So so well said. Thank yeah. y'all so much. I yeah. I've got a bunch of takeaways from this. Get in the dirt. It's a good one. I may have a whole sermon on that on that one. <laughs> De- Deuteronomy eight ten. It's powerful, yeah. powerful. And then Psalm eighteen one and two. Uh, Gail, those are your go to yes. go to mm-hmm. verses. Yep. And you know, Bob mentioned uh, there's hope. And I just want to take a minute and share with you our listeners uh, a passage of scripture that means mm-hmm. the world to me. I've committed it to memory. I hadn't planned on sharing this with you, but it's Romans yeah. 15, 13 that says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's Romans 15, 13. I was writing a bunch of handwritten notes today to people. Mm-hmm. I know I'm kind of old school on that. I still believe in writing writing notes. And, and I find myself more than any other verse in the Bible I signed that verse, Romans 15, 13, because it says God is a God of hope. He can give you hope and me hope as we trust in him. And that is the key. Uh, God has been very good to us. He's been very good and gracious to the Gaines family. They, we would all four of us, if we had you sitting right here before us, we would say it's the Lord Jesus. And he makes all the difference uh, in, in the world, in our lives, in our marriages, in our kids and our grandkids. So Bob and Gail, Y'all are amazing. I really, really thank you yeah. uh, for the privilege. I know Ashley and I have really enjoyed just seeing your faces yes. and hearing your voices. And it's like, I feel like we just went back a few years. Yeah. It's kind of we picked up where we left off. And so thank you for your time. Yes. You're, You're very welcome. We've enjoyed it. Uh, we have too. It's been just thank a you. good conversation among friends. And uh, before we sign off, I always love to uh, take just a few minutes and close out in a word of prayer. And I do want to pray for you. And I want to thank you guys as y'all, uh, many of you uh, take these episodes and you listen to them and you share them with your friends. And we appreciate that. And so many pray for our ministry, Danny Forshe Evangelistic Association. We're very, very grateful for all your prayers and your support. And we're just thankful to God that he's given us this platform, you know, yeah. this opportunity uh, to share. So, Ashley, I'm going to ask you to pray. I think I prayed. I know I prayed earlier. I prayed for <laughs> Shannon and uh, prayed yeah. for her success in her uh, in her, in her uh, running for election there with May the 1st. The oh, that's right. Grapevine, Colleyville School District. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I think Thank right. you. Absolutely. And right. so, you want to just close us out sure. in prayer? And that would be awesome. Glad to. Let's pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for um, this opportunity just to come and... Um, mm-hmm. Uh, to sh- share with friends that we've known for a long time, and it's just so wonderful to see them. And um, mm-hmm. thank you for the fellowship that we have as uh, as believers. Mm-hmm. And it is such an encouragement just to hear their story and and to hear that they've celebrating fifty years mm-hmm. of marriage. Thank Lord, you, Lord, thank you for blessing that, and that, and thank you, God, that you are with us in the good times and the bad mm-hmm. times, and that you help us make it through if we will just truly turn to you and trust in you and. Um, Lord, you just can help in so many different uh, ways. And I just thank you for Danny and, Lord, just for our relationship and for thirty almost 35 years Amen. of marriage. Thank and Lord. Lord, just encur- try to encourage those people that are, you know, going through hard times. And uh, I, like Danny, I do love that verse at Romans 15, 13. It is so encouraging because, God, you are so encouraging. You yeah. give us hope yeah. in our difficult days. And I just am so incredibly grateful for my for salvation and that your love for us. And uh, again, just thank you for this time and um, pray for those that are listening, God. Yes. And if, um, Lord, if they um, just need to reach out, God, we are here and um, mm-hmm. and reach out to other people around yeah. them that know you, God, yeah. and or just know that people do really care. God, we love you. And we just pray all this in your precious son's Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. God bless y'all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been awesome. Thank you. And thank you for for tuning us in today. God bless you. Thanks for listening to Revangelical. We hope today's episode has edified and enhanced your walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week.